If you're an archie student, you're probably like me and you've left some things to the last minute, including your architectural drawings, and it kind of sucks because they take a lot of time. In this case, I'm going to teach you how to create a section in under 15 minutes, which is what I did for my last Studio 7 project, and I got a really good mark for it. So <laughs> I think you guys should learn this technique, and uh, you'll find it really helpful to smash out some quick drawings really easily that still look really damn good. Let's get into it. To start this process, what's going to make it really, really simple is by having a 3D model already modeled up and as fully resolved as possible. You might have this modeled up in Revit or Rhino or SketchUp or Archicad, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're able to take sections or plan cuts through from this model and then export that into Photoshop, you're going to have no troubles at all. So for me, this started off with having a section already in here. Let me try to find where it was. And that was this section here. The key to getting started with this is making sure that this section that you've taken from your 3D model is as clean as it can possibly be already um, before exporting it out. So for me, that would involve, you know, turning off the shadows and then maybe hiding away all of these trees. And it depends how you're going to go about doing this. For us, we're going to try and overlay the endscape renders over the top of the line work. So all we need from Revit, from this section here, is the actual line work of the building so that we can get the correct scale of our drawing, of our section. And we can also get um, a good template to start adding in materials and adding in people and trees and all of that kind of good stuff. So once you've got a really nice section through your model, all you have to do is then add that to a sheet and you want to choose the sheet size that you want your final drawing to be at. For this project, the brief suggests that we do our section at 1 to 100. And considering our composition board is actually um, only going to allow us to have a 1 to 100 section or smaller, uh, we have to stick to this scale. And I'm going to bring this up. You can actually see that that is our section there. An A1 size is... 594 millimeters across in width. So with that in mind, we then need this drawing to fit on what seems to be an A1 page horizontally. So what we've done is then created an A1 sheet, and this is actually a different section. I'm gonna delete that. And we're just going to drag and drop this section, which was section, section four. So this was the long section render out. And so it's a matter of dragging this onto the sheet and you can see that that is way too big, but it's a matter of just placing that on the sheet and that's being 594 millimeters wide. You know that this is going to be at the correct scale when you export it out. So that's step one to get the line work, get everything that you need from this section. Um, you can hide away all the trees, etc., which I've already done um, in a different file. A tip for this is that you can actually change the visibility in graphics settings um, to show how you want the walls to be shown. So if you want them to be a complete thick um, black line, for example, you can double click VV on your keyboard or VG will bring up this screen for the visibility and graphics override settings. WA to go to walls. And what you want to do is override the settings. And you're going to have to actually be in your... Uh, section drawing not on the sheet and you can override say the cut line uh, patterns or the the actual cut lines and you can make this a solid black color um, that's what that would do and you can just say solid and this will make the lines solid as you can see in these drawings here so you really want to have a play around with the actual line work with this section before exporting it out because then once that's exported out you should have something like this, where you've got the lines that are to scale, to the right scale. Then you can start to add in some materials, or you can do what we're going to do, a really quick way of adding in materials, which is going to be through Enscape. I was extremely pushed for time for this project, so this was the quickest way to do it, by actually doing a render in Enscape of this exact same section. And then, um, so that involves adding all the materials to it, uh, the model in Revit. You can see when I switch to realistic, it's actually got most of the um, model materials already assigned to it. So rather than then having to assign all of the materials to this model um, in Revit as well as Photoshop, what we've, we're going to do is render this out in Enscape and then attach that or overlay that to the line work we've already exported out. Now, the only reason why we've already assigned all the materials to this model is because we have to do a, uh, for this project, we had to do a fly through um, of the model and this needed to be completely fully resolved 
um, model fly through to show all the, the materials and the furniture and that kind of stuff. But if you were say just doing a um, 3D model just to bring out some 2D drawings, you would probably find it quicker and easier to just assign materials in Photoshop, which is extremely easy to do. And we can show you how to do a bit of that as well. So we'll do a mix of Enscape and then also Photoshop materials, which sometimes look nicer than Enscape. Sometimes Enscape looks nicer than Photoshop. Enscape will only export out a 3D view. So we need to get a 3D view that matches the exact same section that we've already made a cut through. What you would be able to do is go to your ground floor plan, see where that section cut is, go back to your 3D view, and we're going to add a section box so that we can create that same section in a 3D view. But if we drag these through, the aim is then to try and find the exact same section cut it with the 3D section box. And you can click on the right side here using the 3D box tool. And this is going to be an orth orthographic view of the section. And so then what we can do is then head into Enscape. We can start this up and this is gonna take a little while, but once it's started, it's gonna give us a rendered out view of this, um, I guess, 3D section, which is actually 2D. And we can then drag and drop that into Photoshop. We can overlay all of the materials and all of the, for the Enscape render over the top of the line work. And if we scale it to the right scale, which is going to be matching the actual line work, then we know it's all going to be to the correct scale. Now, if you're taking this path of rendering out your model in Enscape, then you might want to consider separating some of the things that you're rendering out. For example, you might want to render the trees out differently to the actual building. You might want to consider rendering out you know, the back side of the building differently compared to the front side, because then you can change the opacity of it in Photoshop. So it's really about considering how you want this to work, which leads into my next point, which was about finding precedence of the section that you want to create. Go through Pinterest. There's nothing wrong with going through Pinterest and finding, um, you know, similar styles to what you'd like. Go find some inspiration for you to create a section for yourself. And you can mimic the exact same um, style that they've used, but do it in your own way and make it look unique and in your own style. So you can see, I forgot to click orthographic view for Enscape, the visual eye settings here, and you can change the camera from project, uh, the camera projection from perspective to orthographic. Instead of trying to line this up, what I find easiest to do is then close Enscape and then you're unfortunately gonna have to open it up again, but it's gonna start it up in this exact same view, which is gonna make it super easy just to capture that rendering of the section. If we look at this, you can see that I've done a few different renders. And the good thing about Enscape is that it gives you different render elements, such as material IDs and things like the Z depth as well, which is going to help you um, create alpha channels for the background and help you um, isolate different things. So what I've done is render out a base of just the materials on the building. And then I've done another one with the trees because I knew I wasn't going to use the Enscape trees as they don't look great in section. So I've used a tree brush instead, which I'll show you how to do a bit later. I also rented out the planting, um, which included say the solar panels on the roof here, which are very subtle, but um, they do show up. But the main thing I wanted was the materials because I didn't want to have to go into Photoshop and then edit all of the materials for the walls I'd rather just place them in from Enscape. So this is the result of the Enscape renders. We've just added it in and it's already given us all of those materials and it already looks like a pretty nice section to be honest. So I'm gonna drop these underneath the line work so then we can then uh, line them up and I've already scaled it to be matching uh, the actual line work. But once we've added that in, we can just zoom in and try and line it up properly, which it looks like it's been lined up pretty well. So far we've added in the line work and we've added in the materials from Enscape, which has saved us a lot of time because it's also got shadows and uh, where the sun is coming in as well. And they are also some settings you'll want to change while in Revit, um, while in Enscape. And so the next thing you want to add in is a ground plane, just to hide away some of these things that are floating there and to just clean this up. Having a thick ground plane is extremely important to really weigh down your sections on the page and give some balance to your drawings. You can also use, say, a concrete texture as the ground plane. Um, I like to just use a solid uh, kind of dark gray. Usually I'll get the ground plane to match the actual line work, but in this case I've done black line work and then a dark gray 
ground plane. But the key here is just to make sure that you've got a thick ground plane or a thick ground line just to give some weight to the actual drawing. So I'm just going to add this one in. I've copied it over from the other file, but I think that's pretty self-explanatory just to create a thick ground plane. Because then what we can also do is add in some footings underneath the building because as you know you'd be cutting through the building and that's going to have a foundation underneath it. You're not just going to have it sitting on the ground. You're going to have a floor and you're going to have a slab more than likely underneath it. And as you can see here we've already done that and we've got a concrete slab underneath the building, underneath the floor. And then there's also footings coming off of that slab and whereas we are not uh, structural engineers these are not going to be to the correct scale if this was a documentation set you would be showing that this is to the engineer specifications but since this is just a sketch design a developed design um, you don't need to show uh, correct dimensions the next thing you can add is a sky or a background and in my case I've tried to keep this as minimalistic as possible so I've just used a um, like a, a dark kind of cloudy sky um, which is very subtle but also gives a nice effect to it because in the final composition this is also the background of the composition. This section is obviously pretty um, minimalistic and quite uh, subtle. It's just trying to show what I want to show which is the uh, connections between different spaces. You can see the kids looking down at the workshop there and it's just trying to show this underground water system as well. The section is not trying to show how the building is connected to the sky or um, the trees next to it. So it's really about trying to just minimalize or minimize what you're showing and just show what you need to show. Keep it simple because if you try to overcrowd your drawing with just too much with too much going on it's going to make it difficult to read and for someone who's more than likely just going to look at your your composition for less than a minute or if you're trying to show this to a client they don't want to see everything else and get too frustrated with what's going on because especially for someone like a client who has no uh, experience reading architectural drawings you want to make it as simple and as clear as possible without having to overcomplicate things. So once you've added the sky in, you can choose any kind of sky you want. I've done some pretty crazy things in the past with uh, really bright colors or um, really red uh, sunset or something like that, and it can work. In this case, it didn't really fit in with my design. If the sky is a key part of your design, you might not want it to be subtle. You might want to do something really crazy and cool, and that's completely fine. If it fits in, if you can make it work without overcomplicating your drawing, go for it. So then after this stage, it's just a matter of doing some finishing touches, adding in people, adding in trees, and for that, I use brushes. You can add in realistic looking people, which is what I've done in the past, but for this, we were running out of time and so I downloaded a pack of people, um, a pack of trees uh, that you can just brush straight onto the drawing which was extremely super helpful for speeding up my process. So for example, this is a brush that you can change the size of, you can change the opacity of and you can just place it in and it's as easy as that. You can change the color of it and that's another tip here is to um, create a color palette which is consistent, again, not too overcomplicated. You want to keep your color palette simple. For me, that involved gray, pink, and a green. As you can see, the people are green here just to show the different spaces. I wouldn't choose more than three base colors for your, any of your drawings, to be honest, and you want to keep these colors consistent across all of your other drawings then as well. The next thing then would also be to control the hierarchy of the drawing. So that can include changing line weights and also the opacity of, for example, the trees or some of the things that are further back. You can see that with these kids here, the kids that are closer to the section cut are going to be at a higher opacity. And still, they're not super high opacity. They're not um, extremely vibrant. They're not um, dominant in the drawing. They're just subtle, which keeps it clean, keeps it really easy to read. And then the kids at the back are at a lower opacity. And this shows that they're further away from the section cut. Having that kind of hierarchy um, is really going to make it simple for people to read the drawing. And line weights is that other thing which you can change to change the hierarchy of your drawings. The thicker the lines of your roof or your walls, is the thicker they are in real life. 
and walls and roofs do have different thicknesses so you want to showcase that you don't want all of your lines to be at the same line weight and that's why taking the lines from Revit is really good because all of your walls should be at um, different line weights from the get-go you should have modeled that in in Revit properly and if you didn't that's fine because you can come back into Photoshop and you can change the line weights of some of these things for example if you wanted um, this wall here to be even thicker you can just use the pen tool and you can change the stroke to be the exact same color as that one there and you can just start to draw it in I might want this to be 40 pixels wide and you can then draw that in let's say it was 80 thick it's really simple to do this post editing in Photoshop to make your sections look really nice like we could have just started off with the Enscape render and just use that as our section but it's not going to have all of these extra touches they're going to make it super easy to read and super legible and clear and beautiful because you want it to be also beautiful so that's how you create a section in under 15 minutes using Enscape and Photoshop thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video if you want to learn how to model your projects in Revit, I've just released my four hour online course for Revit beginners. If you haven't checked it out already, I highly recommend it. It's free here on YouTube or you can check out the full course on my website at successfularchistudent.com forward slash courses. I'll see you there.